भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय शुश्रूषोशान से वासुदेवकुचि श्यान्मसेवया विप्रा पुण्यतीर्थ निषेवनाथ By serving those devotees who are completely freed from all vice, great service is done. By such service, one gains affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudeva. Shrinvatam svakata Krishna ha punya shravana kirtana ha rudayantas tohya badrani. Vidunoti suhritsatam Shri Krishna the personality of godhead who is the paramatma super soul in everyone's heart and the benefactor of the truthful devotee cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages which are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted nashta prayeshva bhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki by regular attendance in classes on the bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service unto the personality of godhead who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact tada rajas tamo bhavah kamalo badayaschaye cheta etair anaviddam Sitam satve prasidati As soon as irrevocable loving service is established in the heart the effects of nature's modes of passion and ignorance such as lust desire and hankering disappear from the heart then the devotee is established in goodness and he becomes completely happy प्रसन्न मनसो भगवद्भक्ति भगवत्तत्वान मुक्त जायते तस् एस्टाब्लिश इन द मोड ऑफ अनलॉयड गुडनेस द मैन हूज माइंड हेज बीन एनलाइवन बाय कॉन्टैक्ट विद डिवोशनल सर्विस टू द लॉर्ड gains positive scientific knowledge of the personality of godhead in the stage of liberation from all material association vidyate hridaya grantesh chidyante sarva samshayah kshiyante chasya karmani drishta evatmani shware thus the knot in the heart is pierced and all misgivings are cut to pieces the chain of fruitive actions is terminated when one sees the self as master hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 
Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Bhakti <laughs> All glories to the sum of the devotees, all glories to the sum of the devotees, all glories to the sum of the devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Guru and all glories to Sri Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Nama Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Niti Navane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Prashadande Nirvasesha Shunyavani Pashtachade Shatarane Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasri Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Free from Shima Bhavan Canto 10 Chapter 64, Verse 1. Shri Bhadaraya Niruvacha Ekadopavanam Rajan Jagmur Yadakumaraka Vihartam Samba Pradumna Charubanu Gadadaya Sri Bhadarai and he said, O oh, King, one day Samba, Pradumna, Charu, Banu, Gada, and other young boys of the Yadu dynasty went to a small forest to play. Purport, Sri Swami states that the story of King Nirga narrated in this chapter is meant to give sober instructions to all proud kings. Through this incident, Lord Krishna also gave serious lessons to the members of his own family who had become proud of their opulences. Text 2, after playing for a long time, they became thirsty. As they searched for water, they looked inside a dry well and saw a peculiar creature. The boys were astonished to behold this creature, a lizard who looked like a hill. They felt sorry for it and tried to lift it out of the well. They caught on to the trap lizard with leather thongs and then with woven ropes, but still they could not lift it out. So they went to Lord Krishna and excitedly told him about the creature. Purport, Shri Diva Goswami explains that because in this chapter the Yadda boys, even Sri Pradumda, are described as quite young, this must be an early pastime. The lotus eyed Supreme Lord, maintainer of the universe, went to the well and saw the lizard. Then, with his left hand, he easily lifted it out. 
touched by the hand of the glorious Supreme Lord, the being at once gave up its lizard form and assumed that of a resident of heaven. His complexion was beautifully colored like molten gold, and he was adorned with wonderful ornaments, clothes, and garlands. Lord Krishna understood the situation, but to inform people in general, he inquired as follows, Who are you, O greatly fortunate one? Seeing your excellent form, I think you must surely be an exalted demigod. By what past activity were you brought to this condition? It seems you did not deserve such a fate. Oh, good soul, uh, we are eager to know about you, so please inform us about yourself, if that is you think this is the proper time and place to tell us. Sukadeva Goswami said, thus questioned by Krishna, whose forms are unlimited, the king, his helmet as dazzling as the sun, bowed down to Lord Madhava and replied as follows. King Nirgas said, now, I am a king known as Nurga, the son of Kishraku. Perhaps, Lord, you have heard of me when lists of charitable men, charitable men were recited. Report, the Acharyas point out that although a tentative expression is used, perhaps you have heard of me. The implication is that there is no doubt. What could possibly be unknown to you, O Master? With vision undisturbed by time, you witness the minds of all living beings. Nevertheless, on your order, I will speak. Purport, since the Lord knows everything, there is no need to inform him about anything. Still, to fulfill the Lord's purpose, King Nurga will speak. I gave in charity as many cows as there are grains of sand on the earth, stars in the heaven, or drops in a rain shower. Purport, the idea here is that the king gave innumerable cows in charity. Young, brown, milk-laden cows who were well-behaved, beautiful, endowed with good qualities, who were all acquired honestly, who had gilded horns, silver-plated hoops, and decorations of fine ornamental clothes and garlands. Such were the cows along with their calves that I gave in charity. I first honored the brahmanas who were recipients of my charity by decorating them with fine ornaments. Those most exalted brahmanas whose families were in need were young and possessed of excellent character and qualities. They were dedicated to truth, famous for their austerity, vastly learned in the Vedic scriptures and saintly in their behavior. I gave them cows, land, gold, and houses, along with horses, elephants, and marriageable girls with maidservants, as well as sesame, silver, fine beds, clothing, jewels, furniture, and chariots. In addition, I performed Vedic sacrifices and executed various pious welfare activities. Once, a cow belonging to a certain first-class brahmana wandered away and entered my herd. Unaware of this, I gave that cow in charity to a different Brahmana. Her part, Srila Sridhar Swami explains the term Dvija Mukya, first class Brahmana, here indicates a Brahmana who, who has stopped accepting charity and would thus refuse to accept even 100,000 cows in exchange for the cow that had been improperly given away. When the cow's first owner saw her being led away, he said, she is mine. The second Brahmana who had accepted her as a gift replied, No, she's mine. Nirga gave her to me. As the two Brahmanas argued, each trying to fulfill his own purpose, they came to me. One of them said, You gave me this cow. The other said, But you stole her from me. Hearing this, I was bewildered. Finding myself in a terrible dilemma concerning my duty in the situation, I humbly entreated both the Brahmanas. I will give 100,000 of the best cows in exchange for this one. Please give her back to me. Your good self should be merciful to me, your servant. I did not know what I was doing. Please save me from this difficult situation or I'll surely fall into a filthy hell. The present owner of the cow said, I don't want anything in exchange for this cow, O king, and went away. The other Brahmana declared, I don't even want 10,000 more cows. 
than you are offering. And he too went away. Purport and Krishna's Supreme Personality of God, or Srila Prabhupada, comments this disagreeing with the king's proposal, uh, thus disagreeing with the king's proposal, both Brahmanas left the palace in anger, thinking that their lawful position had been usurped. O oh, Lord of Lords, O oh, Master of the Universe, agent of Yamara, the agents of Yamaraj, taking advantage of the opportunity thus created, later carried me to his abode. There Yamaraj himself questioned me. Purport, according to the Acharyas, the king's performance of fruit of activities had previously been flawless, but now an inadvertent discrepancy had arisen, and so when the king died, the Yamadutas took him to the abode of Yamaraj called Sangyamani. Yamaraj said, My dear king, do you wish to experience the results of your sins first or those of your piety? Indeed, I see no end to the dutiful charity you have performed or to your consequent enjoyment in the radiant heavenly planets. I replied, first, my lord, let me suffer my sinful reactions. And Yamaraj said, then fall. At once I fell, and while falling, I saw myself becoming a lizard. Oh, master. So this begins the story of King Nirga. Uh, and we see here, that he was a famous king, the son of Ikshvaku, so he came in this uh, great line of uh, uh, authoritative kings uh, appointed by the Supreme Lord to rule over the earth and establish Dharma. So he uh, was very absorbed in giving charities. Giving in charity is the uh, one of the characteristics of a Kshatriya. He likes to give, uh, and especially the king should be uh, an example of uh, giving. And particularly, the king will give to the worthy persons. Uh, so one of the most worthy persons is the Brahmana. So here it describes how he would give so many wonderful things to the Brahmanas. Uh, and in this way, the Brahmanas could be independent. They didn't have to... Uh, get outside jobs or anything like that. They could simply pursue their spiritual activities. And uh, of course, uh, he also gave cows, which is considered to be uh, one of the greatest gifts that one can give. Uh, so uh, he was doing his duty as far as a king is concerned. And moreover, he was quite uh, absorbed in this uh, giving and charity. Uh, so in one sense, there's nothing wrong with that because he was acting as a king and acting according to dharma. Uh, however, um, we see in this case that uh, not intentionally, but uh, by mistake, he offered the same cow twice. Uh, so he offered the cow that he had given to one brahmana, he offered the same cow to another brahmana. And the result was that both brahmanas claimed the cow and they both became very disturbed and they wouldn't accept the mistake of the king at all and they became very angry and stubborn. Uh, and as a result of that disturbance to the brahmanas, the king became a lizard huh? uh, after he had died and went to Yamaraj. Huh? So what this illustrates is that the uh, punyas that one performs, generally they take one to upper planets. And here Yamaraj explains that, that because of all your pious activities, you will enjoy very nicely in Svarga, Loka, or higher. Uh, but then he also committed this mistake, and therefore he has to suffer for that mistake by becoming the lizard. Yeah. So the message here is that. Uh, uh, punyas are good for attaining material comforts in this life and next life. Uh, at the same time, we do have to suffer the results of our uh, sinful activities. Uh, and uh, therefore, we never have a perfect existence. In this case, he would take birth as a lizard and then he could enjoy later on his good results. Well, nevertheless, there's a mixture of results. Uh, 
And uh, the other point is that not only is karma mi always mixed, there's never a perfect karma in the material world. Uh, we see even Brahma has an end to his life, so he has to suffer in one sense. Uh, uh, so besides that, uh, uh, the lesson that is taught here is that no matter how perfect we do things, unintentionally still we can make a mistake. Now, of course, intentionally we can make mistakes also because we're imperfect. But even if we're, uh, we uh, don't intend to make mistakes, still uh, it can happen due to the nature of this material world. And this can cause problems. And in this case, two Brahmanas got very disturbed by his mistake. And consequently, he had to suffer. Huh? So no matter how perfect we try to be, still uh, we cannot get perfect happiness in this material world. Huh? You can try by material means, you can try by following scripture like this. And even if you follow and set a very good example, like this king who was uh, so absorbed in uh, doing pious activities according to scripture uh, uh, that he, he thought he was doing everything perfectly. Still, mistake can be there. Uh, because it's the material world <laughs> and uh, therefore even it was unintentional he had to suffer some result for that huh? uh, now of course uh, we can argue well it was unintentional so why did he have to become a lizard of all things huh? so we can answer well it was unintentional but this disturbance that was caused was quite extreme because two brahmanas got affected very very disturbed by him and therefore he had to suffer because of that. If it had been other living entities, it would not be such so problematic. Huh? For instance, if we accidentally kill a bug or something, then we simply do the pancha mahayagyas every day and we're absolved of that. And we don't have to go to hell because we killed an ant or a fly or something like that. Huh? We just do pancha mahayagya every day and we're absolved. Huh? But he had done so many pious activities after he had uh, made this mistake and the brahmanas became uh, uh, angry. Yeah, but it didn't wipe out the effect of this. Uh, so uh, one of the reasons is because it involved the highest human being, that is the brahmana, within the Varnashram system. And thus uh, he had to get a very severe effect for his uh, mistake. Uh, so therefore the lesson we learn is that no matter how perfect we try to be in terms of uh, doing pious activities and avoiding sin, uh, there is possibility that uh, and inevitability that we'll never get a perfect result. We always have to make some mistakes somewhere in this material world and we have to suffer to some degree or the other. Uh, so remarkably, of course, he tried to do the best pious activities by honoring the brahmanas. But accidentally, he also offended the brahmanas, and therefore he got a worse result for that as well. <laughs> he got a very bad result for that. So, uh, the, the reactions that we get for our activities can be very unpredictable. Uh, uh, so we have to be very careful of that in the material world. Uh, so overall, from hearing this story, we find that uh, uh, doing pious activities is no guarantee for happiness in this material world. Uh, because even if we do things what we think are perfectly uh, perfect, still, uh, accidentally, we may offend somebody and therefore we have to suffer again. Uh, that, of course, is the material happiness we're speaking about here. Yeah. Uh, so, in other words, uh, the path of karma yoga and karma kanda is not perfect. It doesn't give perfect happiness. Uh, now, of course, the Karmakanda glorifies the path. And in fact, Jaimini uh, has made a whole movement, the Karma Mimamsa philosophy, to justify uh, going to Svargaloka. Uh, and there he says it is Amrata, uh, that it is eternal happiness in Svargaloka by doing these punyas. But, if we look at other parts of the Vedas and we understand, no, it is not eternal. You fall from that position. Huh? So even if you don't commit the sinful activities and even if you go and get the result, 
uh, Svargaloka, still it is not permanent and you have to fall from that place eventually. Uh, uh, so here we get an example, it wasn't perfect, so he couldn't even get to Svargaloka, he had to suffer as a uh, lizard for one lifetime before he could go to Svargaloka. Uh, uh, other people may not become lizards and they may go directly to Svargaloka, but even then, it's not permanent, it's temporary. So, uh, the, uh, there's a whole section of the Vedas dedicated to doing all these acts to go to upper planetary systems and get material happiness. And many people are attracted to those uh, processes and to that goal of uh, getting happiness on Svargaloka. Uh, but a more intelligent person will understand that even if we get there, it is not permanent. So therefore, it is not a perfect solution to life. Uh, and that is why uh, the Karmakanda section of the Vedas gets rejected ultimately. Now it is there to encourage people who are attached to material things and don't have a spiritual goal at all. But for those who are more intelligent, uh, they uh, give up this process and they try to stop the process of birth and death in the material world. So they take to Gyanakanda, Gyana Yoga or Bhakti Yoga and this way they get uh, released from the material world. So, uh, in the material world, the kings uh, are setting an example, so they follow their duties as Kshatriya, and uh, they do this uh, charitable work, etc., as part of their job, uh, in order to uh, sustain the society and set an example for others uh, and show detachment from material wealth. But these kings also are in a special position because they're appointed by the Supreme Lord. So not only they enact Dharma, uh, but they should also set an example of Bhakti. Just as the David does. Uh, though they are usually famous for enjoying and whatever, uh, they're appointed by the Lord and they also have to be qualified with devotion. And of course we understand Brahma is the greatest devotee uh, in the material world. Uh, so uh, similarly these kings, though they may get involved in pious activities, still uh, they also have to have this other perspective that is devotion. So it's not about uh, attaining Svarga Loka or anything like that. Now, it's about attaining eternal happiness with the Supreme Lord in the spiritual world. So a king who doesn't understand that and gets absorbed in the activities like King Nirga is actually not fulfilling his proper duty. He has to see both aspects. Huh? And we see that in the case of uh, persons like the Pandavas who that they did their activities as kings and rulers. At the same time, they understood that uh, the real goal is to please the Supreme Lord. That is the highest goal of all. Uh, so such leaders and kings are in a much higher position than the kings who simply get absorbed in these types of activities. We see the case of uh, King Prashnabari also. He was also absorbed in sacrifices and things like that, especially animal sacrifices. <laughs> Uh, so Narada Muni had to come and lecture him and tell him that this was all useless. Uh, and actually he would suffer for doing all these sacrifices. Uh, so, uh, therefore, the real king should not just set an example of doing charitable works or doing sacrifices and whatnot and following karma kanda. He has to balance that by seeing there's a higher goal also. So he must set an example of bhakti as well as karma. Uh, uh, for the people in general. Uh, so, unfortunately, this king was too absorbed in the uh, material karmas, that is, punyas. And, uh, therefore, we have an illustration uh, here of uh, what happens. Uh, too much absorption of this can cause suffering. And so, King Riga became a lizard. Uh, well, we also see here that when Lord Krishna touched him, then he went out of that, the whole curse was finished at that point. Uh, so he, uh, by contact with the Supreme Lord, then 
he was released from that karma. Yeah. So this illustrates that the process of bhakti is much stronger than anything else. Uh, it can do much more. Uh, uh, in spite of his punyas, he could not prevent himself from becoming a lizard. But when the Lord touched him, he was immediately free from that bad karma. Uh, so therefore, worship of the Supreme Lord is a much safer process for everybody uh, to avoid uh, unfortunate uh, circumstances like falling into a lizard body due to making a mistake about doing charities or whatever in the material world. Uh, so, therefore, uh, in the Bhagavatam it is said that even if one neglects one's activities in terms of karmas, karma kanda, karma yoga, varnashram, if he worships the Supreme Lord, nothing is lost. But if he gets absorbed in his karmas and doesn't worship the Lord, everything is lost. <laughs> huh? So he cannot prevent this situation of becoming King Riga, uh, becoming a lizard. I cannot prevent that if we're simply absorbed in karmas. If we worship the Lord, then we're safe from all these situations. Huh? Uh, uh, and in the case of uh, uh, Bhagavatam, it says, even if he rejects his uh, duties in karma yoga, uh, intentionally, uh, he doesn't do these activities. Even then, he doesn't have to suffer. Uh, here is accidental neglect, uh, and thus he uh, offended a brahmana. Huh? Uh, but even intentionally, the uh, devotee doesn't do the activities of karma kanda. Uh, still, he is not to blame if he is worshiping the Supreme Lord. So everything is covered. Huh? So that is also what is meant at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna says, Sarva Dharman, Parijaja. Give up all other dharmas and simply worship the Lord. And he says, Don't fear. Huh? Have no worry. Ma suchaha. Why should we worry? Uh, we may worry that if we give up all these dharmas, then we become sinful and that we have to suffer for that. No, opposite. Uh, uh, we surrender to the Lord and that takes care of everything. No more sinful reactions. Uh, no sinful reaction. Uh, even for the uh, sins committed afterwards, and no sinful reaction for neglecting to do those particular karmas, like charities and what. Uh, so the Lord says, don't worry. Uh, uh, you're absolved of uh, those uh, sinful reactions. Uh, uh, so, uh, therefore, this story is told to illustrate that. Another aspect of the story is that uh, this involved brahmanas. There's a uh, because of the brahmanas uh, that the uh, king had to suffer. Technically speaking, if there were brahmanas who were properly qualified, why would they get angry? Uh, why would they refuse to take the cow? Why would they put the king into problem? Uh, so a proper brahmana is very unattached to uh, material assets and gifts that he gets or whatever, usually he gives them away again. Uh, uh, so why these brahmanas were so attached? Why were they so stubborn? Why did they get angry at the king for making a mistake? Uh, so this also points out that even the brahmanas were not very perfect. <laughs> uh, uh, and actually, uh, the higher duty, though at the end we'll find as a whole praise the brahmanas and how one should serve the brahmanas, etc. Uh, actually, higher than that is service to the Vaishnavas. So, if the king wants to do charity works, then better to serve the Vaishnavas than just the Brahmanas. Uh, uh, better to uh, 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 do something which pleases the Vaishnavas. And, and then he gets not just punya, but he gets spiritual effect, advancement in bhakti. So, that's higher than uh, charitable work for the Brahmanas. Huh? Uh, so, a king can do charities and so many things, but uh, better that he does them in such a way that it's connected with the Supreme Lord. So, if he does charity work to the Vaishnavas, even, it's much, much better. Uh, and in this way, you get much better result. And any fault within the process is absolved by the Supreme Lord himself. 
So it's a much safer process to follow. Uh, uh, so these are some of the lessons we learned from this particular story of the King Nrega. Maraj, uh, we see this Putana is a demoness. When she is touched by Krishna, she gets spiritual world. And uh, this king, particular king, is a pious king, but he gets back to these um, heavenly uh, benefits or something. Yeah. Why would it happen, Maharaj? Like that? Well, uh, so of course, uh, Putan is a very exceptional case. Uh, others they get mukti or whatever like that. Some cases we see they get just uh, they get another uh, glorious body, like uh, who was it? The um, uh, the the, uh, the Gandharva, king of the Gandharvas, in a snake body, who tried to swallow. Not a Maharaj, then he went back to his heavenly body again also. So according to the particular situation of that person, uh, then they get uh, various uh, benedictions. Some don't get a liberation immediately. Uh, they may just get back to the previous position and later on they can get liberation because of the association of the Lord or whatever. So according to the situation, they, they get some good result, though it may not always be uh, direct liberation or going to the spiritual world. Uh, Maharaj, even um, uh, when Krishna asked him to introduce, uh, regard to introduce uh, himself to the uh, to himself, uh, it appears there also he continues to have a kind of apparently looks like he has pride when he makes his presentation introducing himself. Is there a reason for that? Is there? Uh, when he's, uh, my donations were to this extent uh, as much uh, particles of uh, sand or so much of drops of water, which means there appears to be an apparent pride when he makes a presentation. Even after that review. Well, that is a tendency within uh, charitable works that we get attached to doing charities and then we measure our charities in terms of our amounts, which is not actually the best thing to do because the main thing about charity is not the amounts uh, because uh, a poor man, he cannot do so much charity, that does not mean that he's less than a king if he cannot do so much charity in terms of you know amounts, it's actually the uh, the mood of the person in doing so. Huh? So, of course, because he is a king, it's expected that he would give huge amounts, so nothing wrong with that. But if he happens to become uh, competitive and tries to do more and more charity than anybody else in the material world simply to be number one, then it's a matter of pride, which is also a fault. Uh, so, therefore, that has to be avoided as well in doing charitable works. Uh, uh, of course, kings by nature, uh, Kshatriyas by, uh, by nature, have a sense of pride and whatever, so uh, we can say probably they cannot avoid it to some degree. Uh, but it becomes dangerous also. Uh, but again, this uh, Brahmanas, we understand they are not so exalted, but still the effect on Raga is so much. We, we see, I mean, they were not, because generally by Brahmanas nature, they would have been merciful, forgiven and all that. Yeah. But Maharaj mentioned that they are not so exalted, yeah. but still the impact on Riga is so much. Yeah, so uh, therefore uh, from that we should understand that the, the Brahman also has to be very careful and the, the, the result of uh, becoming angry or whatever then has very serious effects on the person. Uh, and if they don't understand that then they're also we consider at fault because of that. Uh, of course, uh, scripture itself praises the Brahman and then if you commit offense against the Brahman and then you have to suffer greatly. So more or less it's going by scripture here that uh, because they were uh, disturbed therefore he got this very bad result. One shouldn't disturb a Brahmana. Uh, uh, just as unintentionally disturbing a Vaishnava also has an effect, an unavoidable effect of decreasing one's bhakti. Uh, so, but it's not, uh, it's not uh, as serious as the intentional uh, type of uh, realm. But here the Brahmanas actually, um, which doesn't really mention, but uh, perhaps they weren't aware of the uh, serious effect that their anger, their refusal had. Which means, in one sense, they were not the most intelligent persons also, <laughs> even though they were Brahmanas. Uh, so just to become angry itself uh, indicates they were not of the highest type of Brahman also. Is there a sp any, sp any spe specific significance in terms of getting a specific lizard body, Mother? Lizard. What uh, is the significance of getting a specific lizard? Is there any significance on that? Lizard body, lizard. 
lizard. That's not really mentioned. It's just that the Amaraj, uh, <laughs> even that particular body of a lizard, I suppose. I don't know. And so you see here this uh, King, King uh, Nigar, uh, although he understood his mistake later that uh, he donated the same code twice and he asked forgiveness, still he could not get relief from his offense. So how do you understand about this? Even once uh, asked forgiveness also, so he cannot get uh, relief from the offense, can you say? From? From the offense, because he offended Brahmana. Yeah. But it's and and the Brahmanas wouldn't accept any uh, solution. They, they wouldn't. They refused to accept cow. They refused everything. But it is a problem between the two Brahmanas, not the King Nriga. They yeah. could have... Uh, but no, he was the cause. Because he gave the cow twice. But and they wouldn't accept a solution. So he disturbed two Brahmanas in the but, process. But it was unintentional. Not yeah. intentionally he did yeah. it. So it shows that even unintentional no. sin has an effect. But what about the devotees then? Those who are knowingly committing offense as well as un 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 unknowingly. Effect. Of course, uh, aparags, uh, unintentional or intentional, are more serious than intentional or unintentional sins. So, the sins themselves are not so significant and therefore Krishna says, even if you commit the most sinful activity, you're still my devotee. And so therefore, no real problem. But, he doesn't say that about aparags. So, aparags are more serious than sins, whether it's intentional or unintentional, because they affect the bhakti. And unintentional sins, of course, are less. They affect less intentional sins, well, uh, more seriously uh, create obstacles for the bhakti. So, in the case of Nigo, can you say this is sin or this is of Adam? Sin. This is sin. Yeah. But uh, he, he became the cause for the disturbance. In the sense that he was the cause of the disturbance. The Brahman is becoming upset, that's all. So, Not so, that he deliberately wanted to disturb them, he was trying to please them all, but he made a mistake and they both became disturbed and consequently he had to suffer the result for that mistake. Krishna <coughs> Maharaj. Maharaj, we see that uh, uh, sometimes this seems uh, very extreme cases like uh, this punishment uh, or this uh, uh, period is very long for a small uh, unintentional uh, mistake uh, he did for that he, he was suffering a very long period inside the well as lizard. Well, I don't know how long the lizard lived but uh, uh, it was probably we can say we, we don't think it's so severe but because there was a brahmana or two brahmanas they got disturbed that was the problem if it had been lesser people less effect maybe you'd only be uh some you know a human being in a in a lower body or something like that because it was two brahmanas got very disturbed therefore he got greater effect which it shows in the system of karma that uh the brahmanas are higher the highest human being and therefore offense against them uh, gives greater you know, reaction and my question is that uh, Maharaj, now this uh, Vaishnavas, uh, we see that Vaishnavas also get anger sometime uh, while we are uh, dealing with them. And uh, unintentionally, uh, they are very soft in nature, uh, comparing to even the Brahmanas, Vaishnavas are very soft. And due to that, they may feel very easily offended, uh, whatever, uh, while dealing, sometime Oh, offended. Well, if the Vaishnava feels offended, it doesn't mean he's really soft. Huh? If he's really soft, he's humbler than a blade of grass, then he will feel no offense. <laughs> so he may be tolerant in one sense, but he may have some pride also, which causes the offense. Maybe. Wouldn't the last of the Bhagavad Gita be continued? Why are the past lives of Bhagavad not presented in chronology? Uh, one explanation is that. Sukhudev was in such uh, uh, joy that sometimes he, he didn't do things in the proper chronology. Banasura is the son of Bali who appeared in different yuga. How is it possible? Well, uh, they can, yeah, Bali, uh, Bali appeared, uh, which was seventh Manvantara or something. Uh, in uh, Vaivasvata Manvantara, the seventh yuga cycle or something like that, I think, quite early. Uh, 
and then uh, Banasura was his son. So they can live for long periods of time, much longer than us. Huh? Oh, I don't know about Bali was, I think, seventh. Rama is 24th, uh, or 28th. So I think Vamana was in tw uh, seventh or something, seventh cycle. Mm. Mm.